We begin this broadcast with a news alert coming in. Pakistan's political battle, which has been in its top court for a fifth day now, will see a conclusion tonight. A verdict by Pakistan's top court will be out today. In the next few hours, in fact, the Supreme Court will give a verdict on the National Assembly Deputy Speaker's April 3rd ruling, which rejected the crucial no-confidence vote against Imran Khan and the subsequent dissolution of assemblies. A five-judge Supreme Court bench headed by the Chief Justice has been hearing the matter since Sunday, as we at Vion have been reporting. In fact, earlier today, the Chief Justice, Omar Atta Bandeyal, in his observation said that it is clear that the Deputy Speaker's ruling is wrong. The Chief Justice further said that the Deputy Speaker's ruling is prima facie a violation of the Article 95 of the Constitution. The ruling has been at the centre of this battle in the top court. The government's counsel argued that the apex court has refrained from interfering in parliamentary proceedings in the past and asked whether the court would have taken notice if the speaker had dismissed Fawad Chaudhry's point of order. On Sunday, the Chief Justice of Pakistan had taken a suomoto notice of the situation after a rejection of the no-trust motion against Imran Khan, clubbing multiple petitions filed by the opposition. The Supreme Court could now call for a restored government, so to speak, or even fresh elections, or it could do neither. The court could also bar Imran Khan from standing again if he's found to have acted unconstitutionally. Whichever way the judgment goes, what remains to be seen at this point is that if the court's verdict will end the current crisis in Pakistan. For more analysis, joining us now is Ahmed Shaheen, a Pakistani senior journalist. He joins us now live from Lahore. Ahmed, thanks so much for joining us. We, of course, have been tracking the political upheaval in Pakistan, as you have. The crucial verdict from the Pak top court will be out today. What are the options facing Imran Khan currently? Unless the court, like its history, takes down the root of the doctrine of necessity, that legally we're supposed to do something else, but we're doing something else because that is necessary in the eyes of the court. Now, the doctrine of necessity has been used time and time again in Pakistan, and it has always gone against the interests of the people. It has been there to protect individuals. So as far as this case is concerned, it's not a very complicated one. That is why a lot of people were expecting a verdict on the first day. It is as clear as black and white that the speaker, the deputy speaker, using the powers of the Speaker of the National Assembly, did something gravely illegal. It's written in black and white that you cannot, once the, it has been tabled that the vote of no confidence is going to take place, there is no other way to overturn it except for getting it on, voted on and then implementing what happened. So even the Supreme Court time and again is saying that that ruling of the government is illegal. So as far as the prediction, the prediction is concerned, it's a very simple prediction. That of course, when a court is saying that something that happened is illegal, that anything that happened after it would also be deemed illegal. Right. So as a result of the first illegal action. However, I mean, Pakistan's history, if you look at what they're talking about, the judges, what they're talking about, the judges are saying that we're going to make sure that justice prevails. But they're also talking about the practical realities. They, uh, let, me, let me quote them. They were talking about national interest and practical realities. So, the, I mean, when you talk about national interest and practical realities, then as it has been seen in the history of Pakistan's judicial cases, law has not been applied correctly. Now, on the other hand, the judges are also saying a lot of things that gives us hope that the law will be applied correctly. But... And they're saying it, they're saying other things as well. They're right. asking the opposition that you wanted re-elections. If you get re-elections, what problem do you have? And the opposition is trying to tell the courts that it's not about what we want or what Imran Khan's government want. It's about what the law says. And the law has to, has to take its action and say that it's not just a simple matter of, you know, they did something illegal, so we'll give you something that you want. If they have done something illegal, the law states the consequences of those things being illegal. And the problem with Pakistan has been that none of those people, the powerful people who abrogate the constitution have ever been punished. So the opposition is saying, let's make a difference this time. Right. Let's put the law in action rather than the doctrine of necessity.
Now, moving on from the legal side of this, the political drama continues as we speak. The Pakistan economy is still in a state of crisis. Will all this lead to any action on that front? I mean, that, that is one of the reasons uh, Chief Justice was also talking about it, that they're trying to uh, give the verdict. They have said 7.30 p.m. today. It was supposed to be tomorrow. They announced that yesterday they're going to give the verdict because uh, within a few days, uh, rupee has fallen by 10 rupees. I mean, rupee uh, is now um, 190s. It's touching 190 rupees, which is unprecedented. It has never happened, not even close in the history of Pakistan. And also, technically speaking, we don't have a government because Imran Khan's government has dissolved its own government and still he's being the prime minister. They're writing to the opposition leader in the National Assembly. While there is no National Assembly, they dissolved the National Assembly. So there is no government. There is no policy. I don't know who is running the government. It's a surprise. It's something to look at that the prime minister and his cabinet, they've all, they're all gone. <clears throat> Assemblies are gone. The National Assembly is gone. And yet there is someone running the country right now. I don't know who that is. Or maybe I do, and I can't say it. But the real thing is that it was going so bad in the presence of the so-called government. Now, in the absence and in the in this environment where the stock exchange is getting directly affected by the uncertainty, what is happening in Pakistan? Even the judges are, uh, you know, they're saying that it is illegal, but they're saying they are saying other things that make it make the verdict so unpredictable. I mean, if I had to put my money on it, I would say the judges are going to do the right thing. But has it been the case throughout Pakistan's history? Sadly, no. It's the same place, the Supreme Court of Pakistan, the same place where the judges sided with a military dictator and hanged an elected prime minister. And till now, that case, that case they have never been able to un overturn it, saying that it was wrong of a court to hang an elected prime minister, which the history of time uh, concluded that he was not guilty of that charge as well. So the Supreme yeah. Court is talking about a lot of those bad spots that it needs to wash. Supreme Court is talking about the fact that on social media, there is so much criticism that outside the court, the opposition parties are criticizing um, the Supreme Court for the delay. And uh, even the government is also now attacking, kind of, it, it seems that they're attacking uh, the Supreme Court and saying that if the Supreme Court actually gives a verdict out in which they look at the law rather than the necessity that how do we keep public order and all of that. Then the government is saying that it will be 400 years since that has happened. So the court is on the back foot. The court understands that, um, you know, the inflation is happening in Pakistan. The prices of petrol, electricity, food, they are unreachable for the common man. And this is a slippery slope where if Supreme Court does not act responsibly, because it is acting both responsibly and irresponsibly right now, a lot of people think that the verdict should have come in much sooner because there is a constitutional and governmental crisis in Pakistan, and you cannot adjourn the hearing in the afternoon for tomorrow. And it has been happening since the last four or five days. Just so, a so follow-up to that, Emir, I'm sorry to interject. Just a follow-up to that. Let's talk about the Pakistan youth in particular. We earlier heard the Pak Prime Minister rile up the youth by asking them to take to the streets. How are the young people of Pakistan reacting to all this drama? What are their demands? Imran Khan tried to get a Capitol Hill version of Pakistan into place. He tried it very hard one day before he dissolved the assemblies. He was constantly coming again and again at the youth, at the young people, uh, primarily PTI supporters, as he perceived that the large uh, you know, number of them support PTI. And he appealed to them and he wanted, just like Donald Trump did, he wanted them to come out and he kept saying, get out on the streets. We need to protest. We need to take it to the parliament. We have to go into the red zone where people are not allowed. And he kept saying it. And all of us feared that if he had that kind of street power that he was allotted long before, then Pakistan's security situation would be, um, you know, like in tatters. But however, that thing, when it wasn't working, Imran Khan's plan B was what we're talking about today. The illegal, non-constitutional action by the deputy speaker happened after Imran Khan was not able to exert street power. Because let's not forget that street power uh, in terms of numbers and also in terms of being weaponized and being violent, the opposition is not a very innocent uh, bystander when it comes to that. JUIF, Molana Fazur Rahman has its own danda force 
Absolutely. And, Emil, and I'm afraid uh, we're running out of time at this point. But thank you so much for joining us on Beyond. And thank you so much for breaking that down for us so well. Now, for better clarity on the matter as well, joining us now is our Pakistan Bureau Chief, Anas Malik. He joins us now from Islamabad. Anas, thanks for joining us. You've been tracking all the updates in this political drama very closely. A verdict by Pakistan's top court will be out shortly, in fact, in a few hours. Uh, the Supreme Court will give a verdict essentially on the National Assembly Deputy Speaker's April 3rd ruling which rejected the no-trust motion against Imran Khan. Tell our viewers the significance of this verdict and what lies ahead for Imran Khan. Well, Priyanka, in some moments from now, some hours from now, uh, the verdict will be announced. Uh, it is said to be a historic verdict uh, and it is proclaimed that it will not be under the doctrine of necessity. It will not be a, a reflection of what we've seen in the past, the Junejo verdict, and that uh, the, uh, it's being said or proclaimed that the constitution will be followed in latter and spirit. Now, that is what is being claimed at this point of time. But at the same time, uh, towards the end, I was inside the court and towards the end, the court has asked uh, all political parties for their recommendations for uh, the uh, electoral uh, process, uh, uh, the overhaul of the electoral process. So that is something that is very significant. That, can, that also hints that this can also go that... Uh, uh, the court might just as well set aside the ruling by the speaker, but then since the elections are announced, it would it can possibly direct the court, uh, the other parties to go for elections. All eyes on the Supreme Court of Pakistan, which in about three and a half hours from now will be announcing that very significant verdict on the actions of the 3rd of April. Priyanka. Absolutely, Anis Malik. Thanks so much for joining us. We, of course, will be tracking this crucial verdict, which is expected hours from now on Beyond World is One. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.